Hi everybody, it's Amanda Rideout with Health and Homeopathy and we are here with our favorite pharmacist, cosmetic chemist and nutritionist, Ben Fuchs. And I know it's been a while since we've done one of our uh, videos, but I'm really excited about this one Hi. because yeah. we're going to talk about something really special. But first of all, I want to say, hi Ben, how are you? Hi Amanda, nice to see you. <laughs> nice to see you. So you told me something. Um, I have, I guess, secretly been a guinea pig <laughs> to, to a, a product that just came out. And it's, um, this is something I've been waiting for a long time. It's your new face wash line. Well, I, got two, I have two cleansers. Okay. I started the, started the truth off with four products. Uh, because I, I was legally restricted to four products when I right. sold my last company. So after that, we added a fifth product, the Mist. Then we have uh, two supplements coming out. And now we have, you know, the blemish, well, the blemish yes. repair yes. complex. Yes, I know that one. And then also I have a connective tissue supplement coming out. That should be in the next week or so. I mean, it's ready to go. We just have to put it on the website. Um, and that's going to be really interesting. That's for building connective tissue. You know, that's what, I'm, that's what the, the truth is all about. That's my philosophy of health. My philosophy of health and anti-aging really revolves around building the connective tissue. Yeah. The connective tissue is what uh, deteriorates when we have the, the classic signs of aging that we all find unpleasant. Whether it's the classic signs of aging visually, like wrinkles, exactly, or uh, osteoporosis or arthritis, the shriveling up that happens, or whether it's the connective tissue breaking down internally in terms of the circulatory system. When the connective tissue in the circulatory system breaks down, we're more prone to heart disease. And cholesterol is actually a remedy that the body has for correcting a broken down connect or, or healing or patching broken down connective tissue. So broken down connective tissue is really the very essence to me of what aging is about and what anti-aging is about. And all my truth products are about building the connective tissue. So vitamin C and vitamin A are really the, the two main connective tissue building substances. Uh, the new the supplement I have is a connective tissue raw material, building raw material. It's going to be uh, high hyaluronic acid and vitamin C and copper and glucosamine and a whole bunch of zinc, a whole bunch of really uh, important connective tissue building nutrients, collagen, peptides, etc. So when you build connective tissue, you get multiple benefits. Cleansing the skin is the harshest thing we do to our skin on a regular basis. So you've got to be really careful with cleansers. And cleansers historically have not addressed this problem. Cleansers historically have been about cleansing. They're focusing on getting rid of dirt. I take a different approach when I'm formulating a cleanser, as you can probably imagine, because I take different, really a different approach with everything I do when it comes to topical skincare. I utilize the cleanser as a, a way of doing something to the skin. It's an opportunity I have to affect change on the skin. I also don't like the concept of cleansing, uh, traditional cleansing, because what happens when you traditionally cleanse is you not only remove dirt, but you also remove skin lipids and you also disturb the very delicate balance that's on the skin in terms of the stratum corneum, the, the dead skin cells on the surface, as well as the microbiome, the bacteria that live on the skin. So you gotta be really careful with cleansing. Now, do you, you're, you've obviously used cleansers, everybody's used cleansers, right? What is a cleanser really? What is happening when you cleanse? Have you ever thought about that? Maybe not. I've never thought of it, but okay. you know, I know that when I use certain kind of cleansers, it will strip the oil and everything off my skin. What's happening on a molecular basis? Tiny, if you zoom in onto the molecules of the cleanser and the molecules in your skin, what exactly is happening? Well, it turns it's all a base, it's all based on the phenomenon of oil and water not mixing. And so, what a cleanser does is it bridges oil and water. The dirt on your skin is oil. It's in the oil phase. The water from the tap is water. It's in the water phase. If you put water on the dirt or in the oil, you're not gonna go anywhere because the oil and water don't mix. What a cleanser does is it sits between the water and oil, bridges them all together, and rinses it down the drain. That's how a cleanser works. It's said to be a surface active agent. Maybe you've heard of the detergents. Surfactants are chemicals that work, or molecules that work at the bridge between the water, H2O molecules, and the uh, oil, the dirt on your face. A surfactant bridges the two. It works at the surface of the oil phase, the surface of the water phase, and it rinses it down the drain, a surfactant. The problem is your surfactant and your detergent can't really uh, uh, differentiate between your skin lipids and the barrier, the stratum corneum barrier, and dirt. And consequently, you also lose lipids and you also lose uh, uh, corneocytes or dead skin cells on the surface, you disrupt the barrier. 
Right. And this can predispose the skin to dermatitis and rashes and eczemas and uh, make it more prone, make my microbial uh, in, in infections more likely because you're reducing the immune, lowering the immune properties of the skin. So cleansing is just something that you have to be careful of. I'm not saying don't cleanse. I'm saying be respectful of the cleansing process. Right. Now, most cleansers are typically high pH, alkaline. The skin is low pH, acid. So right away, when you use a cleanser, you're changing the pH of the skin, and that disrupts all kinds of chemical, all kinds of chemistry. In fairness, the skin will readjust, but momentarily or for a brief period of time, you change the pH of the skin. So number one, you've got cleansing not being able to uh, d distinguish between lipids, skin moisture factors, skin fats, skin oils, and uh, dirt. So it rinses off the skin oils as well as the dirt. Number two, you've got a disruption of the cornea sites, of the, of the surface of the skin, of the barrier of the skin. So you're more prone towards dryness and, and uh, eczemas. You've raised the pH. You change the pH of the skin from four-ish to six-ish or seven-ish or even eight-ish or nine-ish. So in fact, ivory soap is like nine to 10. Some of the more mild soaps, and by the way, soaps are by definition high pH, alkaline, bar soaps. And tell me hear the word soap. Now cleansers are not necessarily soaps. They don't, so cleansers, soaps are, is a chemical term that refers to a substance that's made from a fat, usually an animal fat, and lye, basically right. something very alkaline. Yeah. It creates a soap and, and this is where you get your, uh, uh, alkaline pH. Personally, I always make my cleansers low pH. I make my cleansers that sometimes I make them really low because then you get some good activity and that's a whole nother story. I'm going to have a, a low pH cleanser coming out here in the next couple of months, shower cleanser. So low pH in the skin can be really interesting because it can give you a real stimulating wash rather than a uh, alkaline wash that changes the pH negatively. It's like a day at the spa for your skin. It's stimulating. It's invigorating. A low pH. Wash. Okay, I want I want some of that. <laughs> All right, I know it's really stimulating. Yes. Now I got a peppermint one that I've been using myself for years, and, and I'm gonna that that'll be out here. For, I'll get you some. Oh, I'll get you. Yes, yes, okay. I'll get you some. So, uh, <laughs> so anyway, so I want my cleansers to, to do something. I don't want to. I want to stay away from harsh detergents, uh, surfactants. I want to keep my product low pH. Uh, keep my, my cleansing formulation low pH. And so, and then in addition, I want to deliver activity. I want to make it like a moisture, like, like you think of like a cream or a moisturizer, like a, a delivery system for active materials. So I got two, and this is the reason why you like that cleanser so much and why it's been, and all, both these cleansers that I, I'll tell you about each of them in a sec have been out now for four years for my friends and for myself. And you know, that's the way I, when I'm formulating, I like, yeah, I, my friends get the best stuff. And you're just going to rock it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I'm hooked on that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because I I make the best stuff, and I'm not saying that to brag or anything. I'm saying that because I'm making it consciously to be the best stuff. No, I'm he makes the best stuff. He <laughs> makes the best stuff. <laughs> okay, I appreciate that. I really do, and I really feel that. So anyway, so the two cleansers are uh, hyaluronic acid honey cleanser, and that's peppermint the one I like. Okay, that's the one you like. Yes, right. That's the one you use. And then there's the peppermint salicylic cleanser, which I don't think I've ever given you. Okay, so let's talk about each one of these. Okay. Let's talk about the peppermint salicylic. Salicylic acid, you've heard of this, right? Salicylic mm -hmm. acid is a very interesting ingredient. If it's used correctly, you can get some really nice anti-aging benefits, some really nice skin lightening benefits, and some really nice uh, uh, moisturizing and softening benefits. In the long term, you get some really nice anti-aging benefits. But you've got to be careful with salicylic acid because there's a sweet spot with salicylic acid. What I find is in a cleanser, if you put salicylic acid, as you're cleansing, as you're washing your face, you're actually mildly exfoliating. You're actually mildly uh, anti-aging. You're mildly softening and smoothing. You're mildly lightening the skin. But because it's in a cleanser, you are rinsing it off. So it's kind of a long-term benefit. Every day, every day, every day, every day. You're not just washing your face. You're jacking up the connective tissue. You're building collagen. You're changing the texture of your skin. You're changing the uh, uh, the color, the tone of, uh, of your complexion, uh, lightening dark spots. You're doing a, a complete anti-aging program every day, little bit, little bit, little bit. So the salicylic acid is wonderful, but you gotta have, there's a sweet spot in there. 0.5 I find to be uh, 0.5 to one ish. 
I find to be right in the sweet spot. Uh, if you go higher, you can get really good peeling effects, like at 17%, you can get great peels, or at 2%, you can get antibacterial and anti-acne benefits. But for daily use, regular use, I find 0 0.5, 0 0.6-ish, even up to 0 0.1, 0 0.1 might be a little bit much, but 0.5 to 0 0.6 is a great place to every day. So that means over the course of time, things will start to change. It will be longer, but now you've turned your cleanser, which is ordinarily a harsh, getting rid of the dirt kind of thing that you want to be careful with, high pH, into an active active product that's doing something. I also put lecithin or phospholipids in there that helps the delivery system. And I use a very interesting surface active agent, cleanser. Now, remember I said the detergent part, the cleansing part, that's the harshest part of, the, of your cleansing agent, of your cleansing product, because that's the part that's pulling the oil off. So you got to be really careful with your choice of what's called surfactant, detergent, cleansing agent, however you want to call it. Uh, and there's many of them on the market. There's hundreds of them, or maybe even thousands of them on the marketplace. I personally use one that contains the amino acid taurine. So it's a taurine surfactant. Well, taurine is an amino acid, and uh, like amino acids, it has a certain cleansing property on its own. But taurine is a very underappreciated skin amino acid. Nobody talks about the skin. It's stored in the skin. It's delivered to the skin from a cleanser, and it acts as a wound healing agent, which means it stimulates the growth of cells, and it acts as a, a moisturizing agent as well. So again, I've turned the what's ordinarily a harsh surfactant that's stripping oils away into a delivery system for taurine. Now, I didn't tell you about salicylic acid and blemishes. Salicylic acid is a powerful anti-blemish uh, ingredient. So for blemishes that are starting to form, you will find that you don't get them or they uh, resolve much more quickly when you use salicylic acid. Remember, this is every day, little bit, little bit, little bit. So blemishes that are starting to come up, a blemish is caused by cells that are partially caused by cells that are dividing too rapidly. You're stripping away those cells every day, little bit. So the blemishes are much less likely to form. And if they do form, they, form, they resolve themselves much more quickly. And this is all in a cleanser. This is, this is a, right. what, what we're talking about here is something that you're going to be using to cleanse your skin. Now, my favorite part of the peppermint salicylic cleanser, salicylic's a good part. My favorite part is the peppermint. That makes it fun to wash, and that also is aromatherapeutic, and it's also stimulating and invigorating. So I recommend the peppermint salicylic cleanser as a morning cleanser. Uh, the second one is the one you've used. It's a more mild cleanser. It's uh, the hyaluronic honey. I use hyaluronic acid, and I put honey in there as well. Because I, I'm loving honey, and I'm going to come yeah. out with a lot of honey products. Okay. I'm really loving honey. Okay. Honey is a rich source of enzymes. Honey is a rich source of B vitamins. Honey is a rich source of uh, natural alpha hydroxy acid, lactic acid, which is very subtle. So you get a skin softening, skin smoothing, moisturizing effect. The hyaluronic acid, put high, hyaluronic acid in there as well. Uh, we should talk about that sometime. Okay. That's kind of an interesting ingredient. Yeah. Uh, you don't get hyaluronic acid in your skin by using this product, but you will get hyaluronic acid delivered to the stratum cornea and the surface where it can pull water in. Hyaluronic acid is a very interesting ingredient to add to cleansers. And I, I usually put it in my cleansers because it's a remarkable ingredient. And, and you know, it, to a chemist, it's just mind blowing all the different things it does. But from it, in a topical product, it's not going to get into your skin. This is a little myth here because hyaluronic acid is what gives your skin a, you know, we always talk about the beef, right? Yeah. yeah. I don't like that word beef, but that's really what it is. You want your skin to be, you know, thick and beefy. That beef is a, is the beefiness is the result of plumping, water trapping. And the plumping and the water trapping are a function of hyaluronic acid. So hyaluronic acid is a water plumper. It, it, it's a, a, a skin. skin plumper, connective okay. tissue plumper. It absorbs water. It does the same thing in your joints. It does the same thing in the internal part of your body. It acts to plump things up. As we get older, that hyaluronic acid breaks down. Our skin isn't as plumpy. So you're not going to get hyaluronic acid benefits. You're not going to build hyaluronic acid from my hyaluronic honey cleanser. You'll get a different benefit. But for that benefit, you want to take hyaluronic acid and, and take connective tissue building supplements. That's where you get that plumpiness, and that's where it will help build your own hyaluronic honey or your hyaluronic acid. <laughs> <By> your hyaluronic <laughs> That's a mouthful. That's a mouthful. Yeah, work on that. A hyaluronic honey cleanser, the hyaluronic acid, will sit on the surface, and the water that you're using to rinse and, uh, or wash your face with and to rinse the, the cleanser off will stick to the hyaluronic acid, and you'll plump up the surface of the skin. And you'll get a long-term skin softening, a relatively long-term skin softening. 
and then you throw in the honey, you get, that just adds it, adds to it as well. That's why I like it so much. Yeah, and then uh, and then uh, another really cool ingredient that are in both that's in both uh, the high aluronic honey and the uh, uh, peppermint sal is an ingredient I call that are called oleosomes. Now oleosomes are fatty bubbles that deliver active material to the deeper layers of the skin. So remember, which I'm trying to drive taurine in the skin. I'm trying to get high hyaluronic honey or hyaluronic acid into the skin. I'm trying, I'm trying to get lecithin. I forgot there's lecithin in my peppermint okay. sal. I'm trying to get sal. So I use these oleosomes uh, to, as a, a delivery system for the active material. And the oleosomes are fatty themselves, so they can help support uh, uh, not exactly skin lipids, but duplicate skin lipids. The net result is smoothness, softness, moisturizingness. That's how I want to formulate my products. And so in the long run, when you use true products, when you use the cleanser, you'll get, uh, when you use the true serum and the uh, biomimetic prime, have we talked about the biomimetic mist, the mineral we mist? We have not talked about that. We'll talk about that one on our next one. Okay, that, that uh, mist. Okay. Yeah, because I, I've yet to learn about that. Have I sent it to you? I didn't send it to you? Okay, so, okay, sorry. All right, all right, I'll get it to you. I'll get it to you. <laughs> So anyway, with the long-term use of all of these products, you will, your skin will change dramatically. And, you know, it's funny because looking at you on Skype, I, I see you on Skype more than anything else, right? We almost see each other once a year. But so I see you on Skype, and I can see the transformation your skin has made. It's pretty amazing on the videos over the right. course of the past few years. You know, and that's what I'm looking for. Oh, nice. I want these things to change the quality and nature of your skin, whether it's a cleanser, whether it's anti-aging serum, whether it's a mist, whatever it is. And you should tell everybody you have the truth, too. You, you get... Uh, Yes, uh, yes. I, uh, you'll get a 10% discount when you enter the code that you're going to see on the screen and that is going to be in the description. But I do want to say that when I started using the honey cleanser, if I if I just rinsed my face with water, I wouldn't get that tight, dry feeling because I have very dry skin. So what I've been doing is I wake up in the morning and I'll just rinse with water and I'll put my truth treatments on, my, my morning serum, and I always like to use the Omega Healing Cream because of the dry skin, which really isn't an issue anymore, but it just, I can't live without that stuff. That's all That's I'm saying. Nice. Yeah, yeah. And then at night, I will use a cleanser and clean everything off my face and then use my night balm. And, um, and then once or twice a week, I'll do my uh, retinol. And so, so 5%, that, 5% or 1%? No, I'm doing the 5%. I'm doing, so I've okay. been doing that now for several years and my skin is definitely better. It just yeah. gets better and better. And it's so much better than 10 years ago, than five years ago. Yeah. It yeah. really does make a difference. And it will continue to get better. Yeah. As yeah. you get older, people are going to start asking you, what the heck, you know, just, uh, what are you doing to your skin? What are you doing? Why are you doing this? As over the course of time, it just gets better and better and better. And that, and the time you really want to get to it is in your thirties or forties. You don't Absolutely. want to wait. You don't want to wait too long because it's much much easier to prevent than it is to reverse. Absolutely. I used to have this really dark spot that went deep. The dermatologist said, "Oh, we can't get rid of that. That's coming from deep down, um, right in here." And it wasn't a freckle. It was that it came out through the years. I don't have it anymore. I mean, go. it's really gone. And I I would go and have stuff done. Don't have it anymore. Awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. So. So thank you. <laughs> the spritzer is very interesting. I don't, I'll just tease it a little bit. But you know I love minerals, right? Yes. Plant-derived minerals, yes. right? So plant-derived minerals are really amazing, but they're amazing for the skin. They have amazing skin properties, not just surface skin properties. The feel is one thing. But the job of plant-derived minerals, this is so cool, one of the main jobs of plant-derived minerals is to magnetically attract vitamins and magnetically attract uh, amino acids and magnetically attract phytonutrients to form a complex, an entire complex of plant minerals, amino acids, vitamins, and plant nutrients. And their job is to get pulled into the plant. They're electromagnetic and the plant will magnetically uh, pull them in. And as they're pulling them in, they will uh, stimulate or open up cells because they're electromagnetic and cells respond to electromagnetics. Okay. They'll open up the cell and they'll deliver their payload into a plant cell. This is how plants get wow. fed. They're super cool. And so uh, this complex, this mineral complex, is called a fulvic mineral complex, will actually uh, act to not only uh, go up into the plant to deliver nutrients into the plant, but literally into the plant cells themselves. So why is this important for the skin? Well, if you put them on top of your skin, these plant mineral, these fulvic mineral complexes, and you mix them with vitamin C, 
and you mix them with uh, other active ingredients, they will do the same thing. They will pull the active ingredients into the low, through the stratum corneum, through the surface, into the lower levels, and open up the skin cells and deliver their payload in the skin cells exactly the same way they do it for the plant cells. So, so your spritzer is an actual, it's an, it's an extra punch. It's, yes, it's not like a rose water, lavender, foo-foo spritzer. It's a way of delivering active materials to the skin yeah. that will facilitate the movement of, the tra of your transdermal C serum, your transdermal C balm, your retinol, your omega-6 healing cream. It will facilitate their delivery. Remember, I'm talking when I'm making a product here, I want that thing to be doing something. Yeah, I want it to have activity. I want it to be functional. Here's what we'll do. By next video, I will have been using the spray, and yeah. we can do a little review, and we could also talk about your new connective tissue supplement coming out. Sounds good. Okay. Okay, wonderful. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us again, and uh, we're going to be back soon. Remember, there is a code for a discount. In um, You'll see it on the screen, and it'll be in the description. So uh, we want to thank you guys for tuning in. Bye. Thanks, Amanda.